What's going on Warriors? It's your boy Lionheart and I'm back. We're not wasting any time man. We're getting straight into this thing. The Avengers Endgame. Man, the movie's godlike. The movie's godlike. I'm just 10 out of 10 movies straight off the bat. That's it. If that's all you wanted to hear me say, then I've said it. Right? I know you should say those things at the end of the, the, the review, but... Look, man, you knew the movie was going to be godlike. I knew the movie was going to be godlike. I just didn't know how good. The movie is better than the first movie. And the first movie is super top tier. That movie is godlike. The f Infinity War? It's a godlike movie. 10 out of 10. This movie is way better. Way better. I didn't know how they were going to do it. I mean, especially when pretty much at the beginning of the movie, they find Thanos and they cut his head off. Like, I just don't believe that. Right, straight off. And I'm thinking, where is it going to go from here? Right, and of course, Thor did it, right? That, was, that is redemption right there, yeah? And I was thinking, the, the movie's over. I don't get it. But then after that, they go into like this kind of story where they're saying, showing the characters, the repercussions of half the world's population Billions of people on Earth turn into dust particles, right? And how these people, the last people, superheroes with powers, the greatest responsibility, try to save the world and police the world and hold everything together, right? And the pressure that is put on uh, Natasha, Black Widow, because she is like the head of this, yeah? The head of the of the Avengers that is going on right there. And, you know, the, the actual... The, as I said, the mental pressure of, first of all, knowing that half the entire universe, which is... I don't even know the, the number. I want to say trillions, but it's way more than trillions. Let's say trillions, but it's more than that, of lives hinged on you winning. And that is the most epic fail ever. You let down half the universe. They died because you failed epically. Man, that make you that will make you fucking miserable. That will just ruin your I would say ruin your day, ruin your life. Right, and it just show on the characters like the responsibility, the weight of what they had to do. Movie is good, man, and I loved how after they killed Thanos, they were not afraid to tell a story. They said, "You know what? You're not going to put a time constraint on us. We got a story to tell. We got scenarios to show you. We got characters to uh, flush out and show you what's been going on with them." What they're doing, what is their motivation, why are they still fighting, and we want to do that in detail. And I loved how they showed that. They didn't try to waste time, they didn't try to um, say, oh, gloss over stuff. They went in, not afraid to tell you a story. It's godlike. I, I appreciated that, right? The movie, as, I said, as I said in my spoiler free review, you are not going to feel this movie is three hour plus. You're not going to feel it because the movie is so, it's so captivating. It's so engrossing. You ain't going to notice it. Wonderful movie. You know, uh, when you see Professor, blew my mind. Yeah. You see Rescue. You see uh, Professor Hulk, P Professor Hulk in there. Uh, who do you see? You see... Tony Stark's daughter in there. Uh, they show you a lot in this movie, man. I mean, okay, no, no, let me not do that. It's about the movie. Because I know I do that a lot. I refer to the comics. But I don't want to do that because this is not about the comics. It is about the comics, but it's not about the comics. It's about the movie. It's hard, but let's do it. Let's not make reference about the comics. That's where we could get a little bit lost, right? So when you look at, say, a character like Thor, yeah? Thor, now he knows, even though he killed Thanos, 
He should have gone for the head. If he'd gone for the head of Thanos and cut Thanos' head off, none of this would have happened. And then it, the, re the repercussion of that is we get Fat Four. Well, we get half the universe dead. Yeah. And we get Fat Four, right? I actually like Fat Four. They reinvented Four once again. And he was actually godlike. He got Stormbreaker and Mjolnir. That's crazy. That is crazy. And the only thing crazier than that is the fact that Tony Stark wielded the Infinity Gauntlet. That is crazy. And then the only thing that's even crazier than that is everybody got washed back. And then the only thing that's even more wilder and crazier than that is you see Captain America wielding Thor's hammer. Mjolnir. What? What? Mate, when that happened, I lost my mind. I was, I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. I actually, when Captain America threw the f hammer at Thanos, I knew that was, to I knew that was Steve Rogers that did that. I lost, the cinema was silent. I lost my damn mind when the cinema was mad quiet because I knew what had happened. Yeah, and I thought, oh, I was, I thought, I thought, I didn't care. I was like, oh fuck, but I didn't care because I was just amazed by the thing. And then when they showed it was like he pulled it back and you saw it was Steve Rogers. Then everybody in the cinema just, the cinema would, would gasp. And some people were like, oh shit. So, because you know, some people had watched the um, movies and they might have seen the movie where he kind of moved it a little bit, only but knew only four can wield that hammer. Some people have maybe read the comics, some people have heard about it, right? But general consensus was everybody knew the significance of Captain America wielding that hammer. It was crazy. I think that has got to be the most craziest thing in that whole movie, was the fact when Captain America, on his own, with Mjolnir and, the sh and his shield, was fighting off, was fighting Thanos, and Thanos was going in like one hundred percent Thanos, no holding back. It was Captain America versus Thanos, and the fight was godlike. It was godlike. Steve Rogers didn't lose. He didn't lose. I mean, he was gonna lose. He was probably gonna lose, but there was no outcome of that battle. There was no decided winner. Of the movie of that fight, godlike, right? And then when you saw, it looked like it was over because Thanos was like, "I'm going to enjoy wiping this planet off the face of the universe. I'm going to enjoy it. First of all, I'm going to hollow out this planet. I'm going to wipe out every single living creature. Then I'm going to destroy this planet and I'm going to take pleasure in it, right? And then Captain America rally. He had nothing left. He rallied. He's like, I'm going to fight. Over my dead body. And that's going to be bloody hard to do. And then you saw a light. And when I saw that light, I was like, Hulk. When Hulk used the Infinity Gauntlet, the, the mm. Captain America, Tony Stark's um, inversion of the Infinity Gauntlet to house the Infinity Gems. When he could put everyone back, they were coming back. That's what this was. They, it was basically, I mean, at first it was like the originals. For, if you remember in Avengers, the three-way fight, the three-way fight between the heroes was for Steve Rogers, Tony Stark. And that three-way fight was godlike, if you remember that. Now this is the three-way um, team-up against Thanos. And that fight was godlike. And then you saw Thor with Rat um, with Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. Yeah? Stormbringer. Yeah? And man, the movie was absolutely incredible, bro. You know, and I, I'm so happy that they were not afraid to tell a story. They made um, the way they used the threads of all the original Marvel movies and threaded it together. So they showed you. Um, Oh, what's it called again? They showed you the events of Avengers, 
the first Avengers movie, right? And then you had like, I think it was Tony Stark and Thor. No, 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 what? Thor. It was Tony Stark and... I can't remember who went to that. Captain America. Tony Stark, Captain America and Hulk. Yeah? They went to the events of Avengers to get the um, Infinity Stones. Yeah? That existed in that time. Hawkeye and Black Widow. They went to get the Soul Stone in a different time. Rhodey and Nebula. Right? And they got sent on a mission to the Guardians of the Galaxy when Quill first got the Power Stone. I just loved how they did that. They just went back in time and to certain parts where the Infinity Stones were at their most vulnerable or most exposed where it's easy to take it. And because they've all, all been in that conflict, they know the weak points of those stones and when to get them without the with the least amount of conflict. It is so, so. I don't believe that they planned for that because it will. I think they did this movie, looking at those original movies and seeing how they could sew everything together, right? But they couldn't have because it was so. It's so well done, right? I refuse to believe that people are that smart that have got ten years. If they could see, they say ten years into the future, we're going to do a movie. That's going to have these threads linked together to make a movie. I refuse to believe that they're that smart. Because it's too smart. It's too godlike. Right? But I will say it's very, very well done. Extraordinarily well done. Right? How they did that. And they keep you invested in the movie the whole time. And they're telling a proper cohesive story. It's not. There's no mess. There's no bullshit. It's a complete story. From begin to end with every single character. And you actually get invested in everybody man. You know even the characters that are dead like Stephen Strange. You know when you see like them you see the master. Yeah and then she just breaks it down and says like Stephen Strange he's the, the greatest of us. He's the best of us. Right so if he was the one that gave the time stone to Thanos. He must have done it for a reason. So then I must be, me, I must be the one making the mistake. And then she just gave it to Hulk. Stop. Stop. Unbelievable. Unreal. Even as I was saying before, when you saw Captain America fighting against Thanos, and he was um, and Captain America was wielding Mjolnir, which was absolutely godlike, and then Thanos said, "I'm going to wipe off the planet." The first person when you saw the light, I knew it was Black Panther. I knew it. That's why I said I, I, that was another point where I lost my mind. I knew it was Black Panther. I was so happy when I saw Black Panther. I was just like, this is the best thing ever. This is just the fucking best, bro. I want to watch the original Ant Man's now. Because I actually like that character. Uh, is it Scott Lang? I think, yes, yeah, Scott Lang. I want to know more about that character because he was like he was like one of the best characters in that movie, like the, his his presence, the character style, what he was doing, everything. I'm one of the move, you know that movie. The movies flopped. It didn't do too well. I'm one of the reasons. I'm one of those people that just didn't watch the movie. I didn't want to give the movie a chance. You know, I had other things to do, and I chose other things. Well, I could have watched that movie, but I just I didn't want to. I didn't want to spend an hour or two hours of my day going to the cinema watching it and then you know having to do whatever I had to do I wanted to I chose other things to do other than that movie well I should have chose that movie but I watch it now you know so I'm definitely going to enjoy that movie fantastic man and as I said they can still do Marvel movies they could still do Spider-Man they could still do another can they do another Doctor Strange movie you know what it is? They can do another Doctor Strange movie, but I don't think they're going to. They can definitely do another Captain Marvel movie. And what I did like about like Captain uh, Marvel's uh, role in this movie is the fact that they didn't... They didn't make it... She wasn't as important as I thought they were going to be. I thought they were sort of setting her up to be the absolute godly saviour... Of this movie. And she wasn't. I'm really happy about that. I'm so glad. 
that she her role was good. The role she played in this movie suited her. They didn't over. I'm so happy they did not overstep with that character and just try to make a political point by making her over godlike. She was godlike, but they didn't make her over godlike where the Avengers depended on her or they would die, right? She wasn't the one that killed Thanos. She was in pivotal in doing that, in like defeating Thanos, but so was Hawkeye. Hawkeye was an absolute godlike character in this movie, which I did not foresee coming. Man, that character was hella important. Hawkeye, who would have thought it? And then we bloody lost, we pretty much lost, well, we definitely lost Natasha, Black Widow, she dead, sacrificed herself to, um, for the Soul Stone, right? Unbelievable, we lost Tony Stark, and we pretty much lost Steve Rogers, Captain America. You know, he went into the quantum time, the quantum time realm, back in time, and he lived out his life. He actually lived out his life in the quantum realm to where he become a, a real old man. And probably until Peggy died and then he came back. To us it was only a matter of seconds, but to him it was like God knows how many years, like 50, 60 years. Which was godlike. It was godlike, man. And then he passed the, the shield over to Sam. So now Falcon. Prophecy has come to pass. Falcon is actually the new Captain America. It's godlike. Well done, man. Well done. Bro, well done, bro. Like, it's an absolutely fantastic movie. Nebula was an important character. They flushed her character out well. She had important... No one was... There was no character. Rhodes, War Machine, important character. Nebula, important character. You know, even the dead characters like Gamora. Man, I didn't realise how much I liked Neb um, Gamora. Gam um, Gamora. Until this movie. Like when I saw Gamora. I just had to like. I just had to hesitate from just to, to gather my thoughts. I was like. Gamora man. Oh she, I mean she hasn't been dead that long. She's only been dead since. Um, what's it called again? She's only been dead since. Infinity War. But it feels like. We got her back. Bro. Do you know what I mean? So I was kind of just... I was overwhelmed, yeah? By seeing Gamora. Very overwhelmed. Happy, yeah? Just to see certain certain characters back. Man. I want to watch some... I, I hope they do like a their new um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I want it. I definitely want a new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Just so I could see um, Gamora. You know, um, Rocket Raccoon. Godlike character. Everybody in the movie was godlike. Absolutely, the movie was incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. There was like no waste. How can you have a movie with every single character is one hundred percent godlike? It's madness to me. It's madness, and they explained everything. Like, oh, where's Clint been all this time? I can't even imagine. Oh. That's why he's like that. That's where he's been. He's been under house arrest. His family were murdered. That's the reason that he's like that. They explain everything. There's The movie's got no long movie. But this is a whole lot of movie. Yeah. And this movie also shows me something. It shows me that. The most godlike movies. Are not lightning in a bottle. Sometimes I think they get lucky. And they make lightning in a bottle. Right? But it's not. It's not. If anything. I'll say a movie like John Wick. Godlike movie. John Wick 2. Even more godlike movie. Um, Captain America. Winter Soldier. Godlike movie. Civ um, Civil War. Even more of a godlike movie. So that should have given me a hint. That it's not lightning in a bottle. It's when you make a movie with a director or directors that actually care about the material, what they're doing. When you have actors that care, a writer, writers that actually take time to think about the story properly and they have a budget to match it. 
and they have the ambition and desire to make something incredible, something magical will happen. Like if you look at, um, I'll say Capcom for example, we'll talk about video games just for a second. Like Capcom for a second, they've been making some terrible games recently, yeah? And then when they made Resident Evil 2, they made Devil May Cry 5, right? Um, Monster Hunter, they said, we are just good. There was like three philosophies I think they said they were going to do. Is they were going to make good games, good story, and listen to the people, listen to the people on what do they want. And actually, let's work on projects that we actually fucking care about, yeah? Just those, well it's actually four, right? Those philosophies, four philosophies, yeah, has spawned Monster Hunter. No, well, we can actually go back to Resident Evil 7, actually. Resident Evil 7, Monster Hunter, Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry 5. It works. When you actually care about what you're doing, you can make magic. This movie shows it because there's no way you can make Avengers 1. I'm sorry, Avengers Infinity War, godlike, and then make Avengers Endgame even more godlike. And that movie's hella hyped up. Yeah, and it's actually surpassed the hype. Now I get the trailers. Because I noticed the trailers were surprisingly lacking in content and hype. Because they couldn't show you anything. Anything they showed you would have been a spoiler. So they were trusted that the fact that they made a good movie and it would be word of mouth. And if it was the reputation of the last movie, people are going to watch this movie. This movie is easy to do a billion. Easily do a billion. The movie is godlike. Right, and now we definitely know we're going to be getting at least another Spider-Man movie, another um, Black Panther movie, my man. Right, when I saw Black Panther, I was just like, bro, what are you saying, bro? Stop, stop. When I saw Black Panther, that just did everything for me. And you saw Okoye. This movie is too much, man. The movie was just too good. It was beautiful. It's such a good movie. It's, I literally just, I don't understand how they did it. I'm so happy with The fact that we've got this movie in our lives. We're lucky, bro. I can't wait for the movie to come out on Blu-ray. That is mine. That thing will belong to me instantly, right? And they're going to do another uh, four movie. And he's going to be with the Guardians of the Galaxy, which works because Thor is now basically kind of like a, a galaxy traveling character. You know, he's like a, a, a space angel character, like a, a space pirate. He basically is now. So putting him with the Guardians of the Galaxy is godlike. You even saw it in the end, yeah, when he's bantering with Quill and the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's so natural. The characters, the banter, the natural um, comedy mixed with story is just it's undeniable. They're match made in heaven. But then we still have to think about it. Captain America's gone. Tony Stark is dead. That's crazy. That's crazy to me, man. And Black Widow is dead. Mate, the sacrifices that the, some of the characters made in the movie were real. And when I say real, I mean like it was godlike. Like when you're watching a movie, you're not discerning that between. You're, you are not making the separation between real life and what's going on in that movie. Because you've been, we've been investing in these characters for hella long. There's no way you want to see... You don't even want to see, like, the fact that Hawkeye and Black Widow were fighting over who should sacrifice themselves. That's fucking godlike characters. Hawkeye, respect, bro. Respect. They disrespect that character. Oh, shouts to everybody on the Instagram. Yeah, getting, like, mad comments and stuff on there. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So, yeah, it's a really good movie, man. Like, a lot of events in that movie, I literally could not see any of them coming, right? From the 
the, the way they use the quantum realm. Jumping between movies. You saw they went back, they traveled back to the events of the ori original Avengers. To Guardians of the Galaxy. To Thor, Dark World. To Captain America, the first Avenger. They were just jumping to the movies and different, you were seeing like different angles and perspectives and scenarios in movies that we've already watched and how they were changed by the people in the future. Madness. Madness, brother. And that fight in the end was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. The, the end fight where everybody came back. Black Panther, Bucky, Guardians of the Galaxy, the whole Avengers reunited, um, Doctor Stephen Strange, Gu Guardians of the Galaxy, I already said them, crazy, Nebula, man. Um, to be honest with you, I still can't get over the fact of how significant Clint was, so I meant Hawkeye. Like, that character was hella significant. They turned a joke character. Everybody was laughing at saying, Oh, this, of course he's not in Infinity War. What could he do? He's a normal human being. He won't be able to do nothing. And he's like, one. Of, he is like, if not the, one of the most important and pivotal characters in the end game. Well done, man. Well done. They've made an absolutely godlike movie. 10 out of 10 movie, man. Um, what is... I want to hear what you guys got to say about Avengers Infinity War. I'm going to pass it over to you. Yeah. Uh, I may have missed out some points. Right. Because I literally. I watched the movie. Like about. I watched the movie at. 12. 10 minutes past. 12. And it finished about. 3. 340. Something. 3 something. Past 330. Past 330. Yeah. Um, and now it is. Nine o'clock in the evening on the twenty fifth of April, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, so maybe um, because a lot of things, I'm still a little bit of shock about some of the events in that movie. So of course I must have missed something. Yeah, but my overall review of the movie is this godlike. I give it a ten out of ten, and I definitely recommend you go watch it. So worries over to you in the comment section. I'll be watching, listening. Take care. Stay blessed and uh, please keep on supporting, man, because I'm going to be doing more videos later.